All right, and we're live. I don't know how much I should really get started at this point, given that um, no one's really tuned in yet, and I also don't even know if like my mic is working or anything like that. So just as a quick sort of sound check, uh, if anyone wants to, you know, let me know if it's working. Uh, Twitter is Linus Tech, so if you tuned in, then now is the time. So I've got Twitter open on my other feed. And I guess we've got our first question of the night, so I'm going to be doing mostly the questions that people posted on the Reddit AMA thread. So I had an Ask Me Anything thread that got about 300 comments or so before I even started replying to some of them in there. And then I got at least about 20, 30 questions that were really good and I thought that I would cover on the uh, on the live stream here. So I've got just one Twitter question before we really get started, and that's uh, running 900p resolution and love my textures. Is 2 gig worth it over the 1 gig 6850 or 6870? So the answer to that's actually pretty simple. You're going to be running into um, a GPU power limitation. Uh, before you're going to be running into a situation where you need more memory because by the time you start pushing huge textures and huge performance out of a 6850 or a 6870, uh, yeah, it's just, it's just not going to happen. By the time you would need to fill up 2 gigs of VRAM, your GPU would be the limit, not the video memory, unless you're running like a triple monitor setup and you're running kind of older games, so then you'd need more memory and less GPU power, but at that point you probably don't need more memory anyway, so you only really benefit from more memory once you start getting into higher-end video cards. So anything higher-end than, say, you know, like a 570, 580 at this point is where you're really going to see the benefit. Um, although, I guess, on the AMD side, so something like a 6970 or up is where you'd, you're where you'd see a difference. So we've got about 10 more tweets. Um, I'm going to wait till we've got at least around 500 viewers turn, tuned in before I start to do the real questions. So I've got some Twitter stuff to do. Uh, what's this headset you're using? This is a PC 131 or 161 or something like that. It's an older one. Uh, the mic's great. It's phenomenally uncomfortable, but the mic's great, so that's why I'm using it for this. I don't really like the mic on uh, this webcam here. So, uh, What are the specs of my wife's PC? I don't remember. Vaughn, do you remember what CPU I said I put in your computer? She doesn't remember either. Okay, so I think it's a 2600K in there. No! No, now I remember. I totally changed it. She's got a 980X with an MSI Big Bang X Power, uh, 12 gigs of OCZ DDR3 2000. She's got a 5870 with an aftermarket cooler on it, and it's all running off of a PC power and cooling 600 watt power supply. Um, her boot drive is an OCZ Vertex 4 256 gig. So it's, yeah, it's a Pretty pretty decent machine. How much of a difference is there between a Phenom 2 X6 at 4.6 giga or 4.5 gigahertz over a stock FX 8150? You know what? That's a very specific question, and almost no one's going to be able to answer that because it really depends on the application. There's some things where Phenom 2s are actually faster than FX chips, and there's other things where the FX chips start to pull away um, due to the fact that they have more power in some ways and less in other ways. Uh, what I'm really excited to see is what AMD can bring to the table with their upcoming architecture. So I don't have sample chips yet, but as soon as I get my hands on them, I'll, uh, I'll definitely be excited about testing them. It's been a while since we've seen a really competitive CPU from AMD, so I'm really hoping that they can pull it together on this one. How are Rocket and Rumble? They're good. Shoutouts for Jello as well as Freezy7865. Okay, hello. You guys got a shout out. Uh, I'm going to be building my first build, writes in Adam. Is overclocking that worth it? And it depends. Do you like performance for free or do you like spending money on it? If the answer is you like performance for free, then I think you want to overclock. If the answer is that you want to spend money for your performance, then spend more money. I, I don't think there's any sort of mystical art here or anything like that. Overclocking has gotten so simple these days that uh, compared to, I mean, compared to, come on, 10, 15 years ago, when you were like rearranging jumpers on the motherboard to change bus speeds and lower multipliers to make everything balance out and not immediately crash the system compared to now when you just buy a K-series or a Black Edition CPU, turn the multiplier up, 
turn the voltage up, do some Googling around to get some good starting points, and your overclock is done. So it's very straightforward these days. I would definitely suggest overclocking to be worth it. Also, you can check out my, uh, my video review of the Mpower Z77 board that I did quite recently. Um, the overclocked performance versus stock performance comparison that I do is applicable to almost any board. Yes, that board is you know OC certified, but that's not to say that any Z77 board wouldn't have been capable of an overclock like that. I have an i5-2320 and an AMD Radeon HD6450. What should be my first upgrade, says Tanner. Tanner, get rid of that video card. It's actually not even that much better than the onboard GPU on your CPU. So, yeah, you definitely need a new graphics card. Linus, what do you think about the Maximus 5 Extreme? I actually don't see the point of the Maximus 5 Extreme over the Maximus 5 formula because the formula has that, well, if you get the Thunder FX version, it has that awesome external USB sound card with the noise cancellation um, feature that basically listens to your voice with an external mic and then cancels out the sound of yourself talking through your uh, through your headphones or maybe it's the other way. No, no, sorry, sorry. <laughs> it listens to the ambient noise around it and then cancels that out from your voice talking. So it's pretty cool. Um, for so I'm into extreme overclocking and I was able to push a 6870 to 1.4 GHz core. How is that compared to a stock 7950? Um, if you're into extreme overclocking, you should probably already know how to figure that out. Uh, you want to use something like the Orb um, from FutureMark, and you can benchmark your card, and then you can compare it to other people who have submitted benchmarks from a stock 7970, although I can tell you right now a 6870 is not anywhere near a 7970, no matter how many gigahertz it is. With video cards, it is never anything to do with what the clock speed is or um, you know what the memory's bid. Uh, sorry, um, bus width is. It's none of that is relevant. What's relevant is the architecture that's being used, and you can only really compare similar architectures to other similar architectures. So, for example, uh, we were able to easily figure out the performance of GTX 570 versus 480 because they used pretty much the same architecture, just with some efficiencies added for the 570. So that's how people who knew what the spec was before it was released knew it was going to perform pretty much identically to a 480 before it came out, which isn't to say that you could have compared the uh, the frequency of the upcoming 670 or 680 and thought that maybe that would somehow be comparable to the old ones because this is a Kepler architecture, not a Fermi architecture, and is totally different. <laughs> Your wife has the Ifinity 6, doesn't she? Yeah, she has an Ifinity 6 5870, but she's only running a single uh, a single display off of it. Vertex 4 versus Samsung 830 SSD for gaming. Your SSD will make exactly this much performance difference for gaming, so don't worry too much about it. Either of those are good choices. Uh, just a reminder for those of you who aren't following on Twitter, I am taking questions via Twitter um, up until we get 500 viewers, although we just crossed 500 viewers, so I'm at Linus Tech on Twitter, L-I-N-U-S-T-E-C-H. So if you want to submit questions there, as long as it doesn't get too overwhelming, I will try to be answering questions live as well. What's the difference between DPI and CPI in a mouse? Uh, CPI is only really used by SteelSeries, and it's basically can be derived from the DPI of a mouse, so they're not inherently different, is my understanding of them. Um, their philosophy is that CPI is a more accurate measurement of how sensitive the mouse can be, and while they may be right and they may be wrong, um, usually it doesn't really come down to what the DPI of the mouse is to determine performance anyway. It's more to do with the the quality of the laser and the quality of the um, of the components inside when it comes to how well it tracks. So it for me, I usually have to sit down with the mouse and kind of play around with it a little bit. Even at the Windows desktop, you can get a really good feel for how well a mouse's sensor is tracking uh, versus one that's not tracking very well at all. I have an i5-3570K and a 560Ti. Should I upgrade the GPU? You certainly could, especially if you want to overclock your CPU a little bit, squeeze more performance out of it. Something like a 660Ti would be a great upgrade from that 560. Speaking of which, I know my 560 numbers were no good in my recent benchmarks. I brought my 560 home this weekend, and I'm going to play around with it a little bit. I think there's something wrong with it. Those are the real numbers I got off of my reference 560Ti, so I don't know what to tell you guys. It used to work fine. There's no artifacts or anything 
but the performance numbers are just abysmal. So I really don't know what happened with that. Are we going to do any pre-overclocked $2,000 machines in the near future? You know what? Email the crazy Russian at pc at ncix.com. He'd know better than me. He's, uh, he's handling 99% of the PC stuff at NCIX these days. I have very little involvement other than just sort of collaborating with him on it, making sure I do the videos and, and uh, making sure that I agree with what he's doing so that when I do the video talking about how great the system is, I actually think it is really great. What wattage do you think I need for 6790s in Crossfire? Uh, 6790? I'm going to let you sort of see if you want to correct that because I don't, haven't heard of that card, although maybe it exists. Okay, so we've got so many people watching now that since I started answering questions on Twitter, I have 46 new uh, Twitter questions. So I'm going to have to turn off Twitter for a little bit and let's start addressing some of the questions that came through on the Reddit post. Uh, in the Ask Me Anything section. So question number one at the top of my list is, hey, it's Linus. This is from Sweet Sweet Coffee. Hey, it's Linus. Where did that purple gecko hat go? The purple gecko hat actually hasn't gone anywhere. I just haven't been wearing it because it's, uh, you know, I, I think it kind of got old a little bit. But for those of you who don't know, this is, this is the legendary purple gecko hat, the horrible, horrible hat that I used to wear in many earlier NCIX Tech Tips episodes that uh, has a bit of a special history for me. So this hat was, uh, believe it or not, I, th I think I paid about 25, 35 bucks for it or something like that. This is hand painted, well hand airbrushed uh, by an artist in Victoria who just was like selling these hats on the uh, on the seawall down there, and like this is cool. Like you can, it's it's washable. It's machine washable. I've washed it. He's using a really high quality fabric paint, and it's actually got like a lot of, you know, cool detail to it. I love airbrushed artwork. So you can see the gecko's got giving me kind of the stare down, and it looks like he's kind of got like a ground thing going on here. You can actually see right through it. Like this is not a printed design. This is uh, an airbrushed on design. So uh, the hat hasn't gone anywhere. It's just been living in my nightstand, and I haven't really been wearing it. So there you go. That's question number one. Question number two from Neo Vitami is, do you feel that Intel's de facto monopoly on CPUs will hurt the end user? If yes, how? Um, absolutely. I mean, we saw what happened last time around where Intel's innovation really slowed down. Um, I personally think that if they had more pressure from AMD, they would... Uh, I mean, their philosophy right now is a lot to do with performance per watt, which is great. I mean, I'm all about energy efficiency. That stuff's really good. But I think if there was more pressure from AMD's 8 cores, for example, we'd already have an 8 core Extreme Edition. I don't know if you guys know this, but the Extreme Edition um, 3960X has 8 cores in it. Two of them are turned off. Um, so there are Xeon editions using that same architecture that have eight cores, uh, but due to the fact that uh, there's really no pressure and Intel can sort of stick with their design philosophy of keeping within a certain TDP at a certain clock speed, uh, they just haven't felt the need to enable those for enthusiasts. And I would, uh, I would love to see cheaper six cores and available eight cores from Intel, but there's, I mean, we're already seeing the effects, I guess, on on Intel's dominance um, in CPU because they don't, they just don't have to do it. They can keep their yields. So the reality of it is, if they're going to sell an Extreme Edition for a thousand bucks, they're better off to make it easier to make an Extreme Edition versus having to bin them more carefully to get an Extreme Edition. If they had to get eight cores at three point whatever gigahertz, then they would be able to use fewer of them for Extreme Editions versus if they only need six of the cores to be to be going 100 percent. A uh, question from divided by 49. How did you come to be the face of NCIX, representing an awesome tech company and making videos for them seems like a dream come true? Well, the sort of realistic answer to that is it, there was a lot of luck. Um, I was in the right place at the right time with the right sort of product knowledge. They were looking for someone internally um, where I was sort of, I was really the only viable candidate who likes to, you know, do this and uh, also, you know, knows the, uh, cares about it, you know, really is passionate about the technology. And I mean, when we started Tech Tips, it was never, um, it was never sales driven. Um, that was one of the things that we learned really early on from Tiger Direct Blog, who were the leaders at the time. They had, uh, um, that was back when Logan was doing it, and they had so much built in, sorry, I gotta scratch my nose here. 
sorry, sorry. Uh, they had so much built-in viewership, so many subscribers, and such huge traffic. And we kind of looked at their formula, and we went, well, that's not really going to work for us anyway, because it was very hard sell, and it was very like, whoa, check this out. You got this iPhone. It's really good. And it's cool, and it's $149.99. Um, I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but I almost never talk about prices in my videos because I want the point of my video to be this is the hat, this is what's good about it, uh, this are, these are some of the things that I don't think are that great about it and I leave it to you to decide. You go find out how much it costs and you decide if that's worth it to you. I just want you to understand what it is and what it's about and then you go make your own decision because I'm not here to sell it to you. Um, so that was that was my philosophy coming into it and because that worked uh, the project continued and we got more resources over time and um, I started to have a lot of fun with it so I started to try to dedicate more time to it and uh, you know sometimes you don't know exactly what you're creating at the time that you're creating it and it just sort of snowballs out of control and there's almost nothing you can do to stop it and that's what Tech Tips really ended up being. I mean if you look back at that first video which was the Sunbeam Tunic Tower it's terrible. It's just absolutely terrible. And uh, looking at that, I never would have imagined that we'd grow to the point where uh, uh, Linus Tech Tips is close to 200,000 subscribers and NCIX Tech Tips is going to be hitting the 150k subscriber mark soon, which is enormous. I mean, I looked at guys with 100,000 subscribers back then and I just kind of went, whoa, how do you do that? And uh, it turns out the answer is you just got to keep hammering away at it uh, persistently. I mean, we've been at it five years now. It's not going to happen overnight. I mean, I think people start YouTube channels and they think, oh, yeah, if I just create this great content, people will just come and they'll watch it. And it used to be more true even than it is now. Now it's almost impossible to get noticed on YouTube. People message me all the time asking me, how do I get started doing what you're doing? And so number one, I don't really have any incentive to give you the, you know, user's guide on how to do what I'm doing because then you'd be a direct competitor to what I'm doing. So, you know, there's that. But um, even if I did want to help you, I, I don't know that I could because you have to find your own way of doing things. If you try to do things the same as someone else who's already, like if I tried to do, um, you know, a funny spin on the latest news, I'd get destroyed by uh, by Sexy Phil because he's already been doing it all this time. He's got all this momentum. Nobody needs my channel about that unless I bring something really new and different to the table. So I think I sort of went off on a tangent there, but uh, let's get to the next question from C Cipher. Do you think that liquid cooling solutions are better than air cooling solutions or do the aesthetics of liquid cooling outweigh its cons? Now I wasn't quite sure if I understood this question, but um, yes, liquid cooling solutions are better than air cooling solutions. Um, except for the fact that they do cost more money. These pre-done liquid cooling solutions in the single radiator form factor, honestly, other than aesthetics, are not that compelling compared to air cooling. You're probably better off with a Noctua and HD14 or um, something like a Thermalrite Silver Arrow versus using one of those single rad ones. But when you get up to something like an H100 or a custom loop, it will definitely leave behind the performance of an air cooling solution, especially when you're overclocking. Something that even Corsair doesn't communicate very well about the H100 because they've got like performance metrics on the side of the box that go like air cooling this and H100 that. Unfortunately, they're using a stock CPU or it's at stock voltage or something. The H100 is way better than is advertised once you start overclocking. It'll destroy any air cooling solution uh, once you really start to pump the heat into it because water is so much more efficient at removing heat from a CPU. <clears throat> from TMPMF, MF, okay. I built a computer with a high processor load between 40 and 80 percent. Okay, this thing was heating up between 60 and 80 degrees Celsius. The PC is running 24 seven at those loads. I bought a liquid cooling kit and dropped it in. The CPU temperature dropped to 40 degrees Celsius. The interesting thing is that the copper plate of the cooling heatsink that touches the CPU top had a fairly rough surface. Had I used progressively finer lapping paper, I could have improved the heat dissipation even more. Um, that is actually a, um, um, a common misconception that it is necessary to lap uh, CPU contact surfaces that look like they have machining marks in them. In fact, it's far more important to have a flat or slightly convex surface versus having the most shiny surface because uh, those, those marks are from, are from machining the base. That means it's flat. 
Um, whereas if you lap it and you accidentally, and this happens a lot of the time, you accidentally take off too much from the middle as you go back and forth, back and forth, you can actually end up with worse contact even though it looks like a mirror finish. So something to be aware of. Um, from In Money We Trust, it's Linus, longtime watcher, two things. One of his questions was dumb, so um, the question I kept was your favorite product type to unbox. It really depends. I think cases are one of the more interesting unboxings because I can really sort of, um, I can demo the product in a way that can't really be done with pictures or can be done but sort of is more time consuming than watching a video. Um, but the things that I really get most excited about are probably still video cards. I mean, I don't have as much time for games as, I like, as I'd like to anymore, but I'm still, you know, I'm a gamer at heart and I wish I did, so I still, I still drool over the latest video cards. Um, I also love new CPU architecture. I love doing overclocking videos because uh, even though it's a lot of work that goes into sort of learning the ins and outs, or it, it used to be more work than it is now. Nowadays, it's so easy to overclock, but um, you know, learning how to overclock this new platform and then educating others, I want people to get more for their money. Like the way that that's what got me so excited about computers was I was like, oh wow, I can buy a 2500 plus and then I can like overclock it to a 3200 plus and no application will ever know the difference. Holy smokes, why isn't everyone doing this? And so I want everyone to, uh, to have that same experience as me. Uh, from Kent Winger. There are a lot of mechanical keyboards out there, but from personal experience, it seems hard to find the perfect match. Specific MX switches, media keys, key layouts, wrist rests, and LED lighting are all things to consider. Do you think that with the extra attention that it seems mechanical keyboards have gotten recently, that the market for the product will increase with more options available? Um, the unfortunate answer, I think, is no, because mechanical keyboards are so much more expensive than membrane keyboards. And until people, okay, number one is that people who don't type well will never be able to tell the difference. And number two is that even for people who type well, until they really sit down and spend some time with a mechanical keyboard, a lot of them don't really see the value of it. Now, older generation people who you know, started using computers with Model Ms when they all came with really high quality mechanical key switches, will know that that's better, but most of the sort of, you know, sorry, sorry kids today, but for most of the kids today have probably never touched one unless they have like a keyboard enthusiast friend or something like that who gets them into it. So uh, without that, without that pre-existing knowledge that mechanical keyboards are inherently better, I think if anything, because of the cost, they're gonna remain a niche item. Um, and we already have a lot of options. I mean, you want uh, macro keys, get a Corsair, you want LED lighting, get a Mionix or, uh, or a backlit ducky or something like that, Corsair. Um, we have tons of options. I don't really think we need that much more. Sorry, I got like an itch here. Looks terrible, doesn't it? It's like that uh, Seinfeld episode. No, no, it was a scratch, not a pick. No pick. Love Seinfeld. I uh, saw him live in Vancouver actually. Uh, what was, wow, must have been like a year and a half ago, two years ago. It was fantastic. Um, maybe he wasn't that great, but I just I love his humor, so I I enjoyed it. Uh, the review in the uh, in the local paper wasn't that wasn't that great. In your opinion, does adding a sound card and a high quality headset add to the immersion of games? I'm looking at a Sennheiser 350 and an Asus Phoebus, Phobus, Phoebus, at some moon, I don't know, I don't remember how to pronounce it. Um, yes, I personally don't like the uh, Sennheiser PC350 that much. Um, I'm more of a SteelSeries 7H kind of guy. I think it sounds better, I think it's more comfortable. Um, if not a 7H, then something like a Corsair Vengeance 2000 is actually surprisingly good given that it's wireless. And then um, there's always the option, I mean, this is how I used to game, is I actually had this exact mic hanging around my neck and then I was using my Sennheiser HD 555s. And uh, that, that's an option as well. So you can get a real pair of like real good quality headphones and then just a headset mic, you know, or like a desktop mic hanging off your desk and, uh, and that's a good solution. The Asus Phoebus actually is not that great of a value. Yeah, it's an ROG product, but you're probably better off with a, uh, with a Zonar STX because it actually uses higher quality components. Uh, check out the Hardware Canucks review of the Phoebus if you, uh, you want to learn more, hardwarecanucks.com. What is the main thing that keeps you making new videos? Um, well, I enjoy it for one thing. I mean, if I didn't enjoy it, I wouldn't be up at, you know, 10.30 at night my time making a video for you guys because I can tell you right now, um, it's not like it's lucrative. Um, 
I really enjoy the product. I mean, that was one of the reasons I really got into Tech Tips was I loved having my hands on and testing and, and enjoying the latest hardware before anyone else had access to it. So, I mean, I was one of the first people to be holding an Intel Extreme Edition on the LG A1366 platform, and that kind of thing is very exciting for me. So I, I'm still passionate about it. I'm passionate about different things these days. Um, like I'm way more into networking and storage than I used to be, especially because my storage needs are so much more than they were, uh, you know, three, four, five years ago. I mean, I archive so much 1080p footage and um, I do so much uh, video editing over my network that, that all of a sudden I just have these these needs that, that I didn't have before. So um, I'm still excited about computer hardware, but just different aspects of it. Uh, from XY Trouble 07, Linus, what is truly beneficial in having server hardware based computer as in having a two, uh, 2011 socket system with two Xeon chips, 64 gigs of RAM, four way SLI or quad crossfire and Windows 7 in it instead of Windows Server? Uh, what are the disadvantages and advantages of this? Server hardware is not different from desktop hardware. Xeons are the same as Core i7s. And server motherboards are not better than desktop motherboards. In fact, in some ways, they're worse because you can't even overclock. Um, most of your desktop applications are not going to benefit from more than even three, two to three cores these days. So if you're getting up to four and six cores plus hyperthreading, um, I would say for a desktop, there's this much benefit to using server-level hardware other than if you just want to spend a lot more money. Um, that hardware is for servers and workstations, not for, not for average users and gamers. From Lame Dog, so what do you do with the products you get unboxed? Do you trash them? No. Uh, keep them? Sometimes. Rebox them and sell them as unused? Uh, no, that doesn't happen. Or do you rebox them and sell them as refurbished? That does happen from time to time. So there, I hope that answers your question. Here are a few questions I would like to ask, says 191x7. What's your opinion on buying a 23-inch 3D 120Hz TN panel? So that is like the uh, lower color depth but higher response time, or well, lower response time, higher, faster response panel, uh, 1080p monitor versus an IPS or PLS 24-inch 1920 by 1200. Okay, well, that doesn't make a difference. That small difference in resolution doesn't... So basically what he's asking is what's better, having better color depth and better viewing angle or having um, faster pixel response times and the potential for 3D technology? Well, it comes down to what you want. Do you want 3D? Then you get a TN because there's no non-TN 3D vision ready monitors. Uh, you want better color accuracy, better color depth, then get a PLS, an IPS, or an MVA or PVA. So that comes down to the individual user. Personally, I use a 30 inch uh, I use a 30-inch uh, VA panel, and I'm very happy with that. I have no desire to go 3D for my for my daily driver machine. I find that the the difference in color depth is just not worth it for me. But again, it comes down to the individual user. You guys have to make that choice. I can't make it for you. Um, and then he had a follow-up question: Would you go for a lower capacity, let's say 64 gig SSD with higher quality flash, or a higher capacity async flash drive? Because, and his example is 90 gigs. Uh, personally, it depends on the capacities you're looking at. If you're looking at like 256 versus um, four uh, versus 512, then I'd say maybe go with a good quality drive because 256 is already a lot of storage, and the price delta is going to be pretty big. Um, if you're looking at like a 60 versus a 90, go with the 90 because 60 is just not enough for anything these days. When will you go on the KBMOD, the Keyboard Mouse or Die podcast? Um, I'm going to get in touch with uh, John and hopefully sometime in Q4, but there's going to be some big announcements coming up over the next couple months and I'll keep you guys posted, but uh, it won't be until after the big announcement. So I'm going to go back to Twitter for a little bit here. Sorry to uh, have abandoned you guys on Twitter. I'm not trying to do that. It's just I want to get through all these questions and we're already half an hour in and uh, I really don't want to go longer than about an hour tonight because it'll already be 11 p.m. my time. So let's do some Twitter questions. Uh, Eris says, what do you think of the NVIDIA 9800 GT1 gig? I wish I'd read that question before I'd read it out and promised I'd answer it because it's sort of a random question. What do I think of it? I think it's a video card. I think it's an old video card. I think it is DirectX 10 ready. Um, I don't know what you want me to say about it. You can easily find benchmarks of that card and then you'll know what it is. Um, let's see, hold on. I'm going to just read a couple here so that I don't read out any other ones that are sort of random. 
Um, David, David Pruitt asks, hey Linus, do you know when the NCIX US store will offer pre-built systems like on the NCIX.ca site? It's coming at some point. Um, there are some sort of pricing um, challenges to do with to do with doing it as well as the logistics. We don't have an assembly department in our US warehouse. However, if you email pc at ncix.com, the crazy Russian himself will personally arrange for US customers to be able to buy a system. We'll ship it to you directly from Canada. It's actually not that much more expensive. So if you want an NCIX PC, you can get one. No problem. I'm building an ITX PC inside of an ammo box. I'm using a Corsair H80. Is it possible to shorten the tube? It's in Zach. Uh, Zach, the answer is yes, but it's more work than it's worth. Get yourself a custom loop uh, if you want to do a truly custom project. Um, you, what you'd have to do is you'd have to cut them off and then you'd have to, um, I don't know the way that they fill the coolant ones, but I know on the old Asetek ones what you had to do is you actually had to disassemble the pump unit from the base plate and then you had to fill it like that and then like put the base plate on and hope you didn't have too much air stuck inside and that was the only way to put in aftermarket tubes. I remember because I wanted to swap out the tubes with some UV blue ones for a build I was doing, it ended up being way more trouble than it's worth just like way more trouble than it's worth. Uh, Linus, should I get a Razer Naga Epic or Mionix 5000? I'm only going to play FPS games. Um, I love the sensor in the Naga, to be perfectly honest. Um, the Mionix 5000 is really good too. I really like it, but it's not my favorite. I don't like the uh, the Surface compatibility, at least uh, using the firmware on the one that I have. It's quite an old sample, but um, I, I love the Naga. The only thing I don't like about the Naga is it's quite small, and I have small hands already, so unless you've actually tried it in person, then you might want to make sure that you have a chance to actually touch one. Um, I have a Logitech G600, but I haven't had a chance to try it yet, but I'm really excited about that one because I love the G9 laser that I, uh, that I use. I love the sensor on the G9, and I'm hoping that they're using something as good or better in the, uh, in the G600. And those buttons don't really get in your way the way that they do on the Naga as well as some of the SteelSeries MMO mice, and it's, it's a much nicer hand shape. The ergonomics are outstanding. So uh, consider the G600. Would you update from an i7-2600K to a 3770K? I think the simple answer is no. They're very close in terms of performance once you overclock them both to the max. Will NCIX ever ship computers to the USA? Okay, we covered that. Um, hmm. Someone's asking if I considered the new MSI Z77 board for my personal build. No, I'm using X79. I'm not using LGA 1155, although, actually, I'm very excited about this. Not this. Sorry, move that out of the way. This, ah, this just arrived, and they have completely redone the way that they're doing, the, the way that they're, uh, uh, they've completely redone their VRM design on this board uh, compared to their previous... that there is no, um, I'm hoping that there's no coil line. The color scheme of the board is excellent. You know, the quality is excellent. I'll use anything from the big three, Asus Gigabyte MSI, and I'm super stoked to, to try that one, and hopefully I'll have a real update for you guys soon because I don't want to start dremeling holes in the case so I can't get it painted because I haven't done the holes yet, and I don't want to start dremeling holes in the case until I've actually decided on a board. So, yes, the project's been stalled, but hopefully it's going to be uh, back on track pretty soon here. Uh, which 660 Ti would you recommend? MSI Power Edition. Done. No brainer. Uh, would you something something? No 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 no. Uh, what's your thought on the Sabretooth 990FX versus the Crosshair 5 formula? I've never used the 990FX, but I can tell you guys the Crosshair 5 is an outstanding board. Way better than the 990FX boards I've used from the other manufacturers. Uh, Asus really set themselves apart on their, not on their 990FX implementations. Uh, but sorry, I can't really comment on the Sabretooth because I haven't used it. Oh, Brad, Bradley. Bradley writes in, your test on seeing hertz, so seeing the refresh rate of the monitor didn't seem fair. The game was only outputting about 70 FPS. If you got 120 FPS, wouldn't it be a better test? Bradley, I can tell you right now from how many times I've run that benchmark, there are plenty of times in that bench when it's well over 60 FPS. So don't worry about it. It's all good. Um, however, as for whether it's fair or not, I wasn't really going for fairness. I was going for... The point was, 
is this something that is immediately obvious or is this not something that's immediately obvious? And I think what we discovered is that for the average gamer, it's not immediately obvious if they don't have any experience already with uh, 120 hertz. And I sure hope this live stream's still going because mine sort of has lagged out for a second here, but no one's complained yet. So uh, hopefully we're all right. Um, Linus, I have a something something. Yeah, no, not a good question. Uh, thoughts about carbon chips? I do. I, I'm not an engineer. I'm sorry. Um, no offense. Here's a good one. MC Donald. No offense, but does it annoy you that everyone thinks you're gay? Um, no, not at all. I think it's hilarious. And in fact, for years, I intentionally went out of my way to never address it at all because it just was way too amusing. And honestly, from from a sheer YouTuber perspective, anything that generates comments and discussion on my videos is like thumbs up. So if people want to sit and have like a long discussion about how I'm gay or not gay, like great, post comments on the video, fantastic, thumbs up, thank you for uh, for driving up my YouTube search rankings with your totally irrelevant comment. Yay. Uh, would you recommend the mechanical keyboard over the Logitech G19? Yes. New MacBook Pro or Razor Blade? MacBook Pro. Install Windows on it. Uh, what else we got here? What's better in your opinion? The 800D or Cosmos 2 for water cooling? 800D, hands down. Cosmos 2 is big, but it's actually not particularly well laid out in terms of water cooling. The 800D is an excellent, well thought out case. However, there's already rumors of a 900D on the horizon, so you might want to just sort of hold your horses for a little bit and wait and see what happens with that. And you might think a 360 rad's enough for you, but what you'll discover is that water cooling is basically like injecting drugs into your veins, and you'll find that what once was enough is quickly not enough anymore. <laughs> reading, reading, reading. Will you benchmark Max Payne 3 and Sleeping Dogs? You know what, I don't have a copy of Max Payne 3, so I don't really have any intention of doing it. Sleeping Dogs, I might. I just got a copy today. So if I find some time, then I will, but I've got a lot of backlog right now. I've actually got about 15 videos shot not yet uploaded because I only do one video per day and then I've also got a whole bunch of stuff that I've committed to uh, to the manufacturers to produce like for example this I'm really excited about uh, Western Digital managed to get me my hands on this Synology NAS and four of their new RED drives so we're going to be doing a great episode about their RED uh, RAID and NAS edition drives and the benefits that they have over their regular drives I mean I can give you guys a quick summary and the summary is they're using enterprise level validated components because there's a binning process for platters and spindles and hard drives in much the same way that there's a binning process for memory or CPUs or anything else and all they're doing is they are reducing the spindle speed so they're not as fast as their RE series drives, they're true enterprise drives, but they are operating under a very strict tolerance in terms of their vibrations so they're excellent for rate operation and honestly they're fast enough for any NAS out there anyway because you're going to be bottlenecked by the chipset in these inexpensive enclosures or the gigabit ethernet connection long before you're going to be bottlenecked by the performance of the drives themselves if you're running in uh, in some kind of a raid. By the way, feel free to let me know if this is like totally boring and not interesting because I'm still pretty new to this whole live stream thing. So um, I hope you guys like the way I'm managing questions. Uh, what I'll probably do is instead of posting an AMA on Reddit next time, I'll just post in the PC section. And uh, I do want to continue to take Twitter questions. It's, it's easier to manage Twitter now that I'm using the browser-based one versus trying to do it on my phone because that's how quickly they're coming in and it's really, really hard to keep up. What's your opinion on the Zalman 9900 CPU cooler? Oh man, it is really hard to install. It took me and Slick to get that thing installed on a motherboard. So it looks great. Um, it cools well, but oh man, get something easier to install. Noctua is awesome for that. You can always replace the fans on a Noctua if you don't like the color. How long do you think until we see 600 to $800 4K monitors? Um, no no time frame can be soon enough for me. I'm very excited about 4K, but unfortunately uh, my crystal ball is like not functioning right now, so I can't really speculate on that. Does a good motherboard make a big difference in gaming? Uh, no. No. What do you want me to say? It doesn't make any performance difference these days. What it comes down to is the features that it has. Um, as Well, the features that it has. Um, 
yes, it might last longer. Yes, it might be more stable. But what you really want to look for is, you know, hey, does it come with like a Bluetooth and Wi-Fi adapter? Does it have, you know, SaaS connectors on it, which is pretty cool? Uh, does it support things like quickly charging your iPad when you plug it into the front panel ports? Um, does it have support for, you know, three-way SLI if you ever plan to use multiple graphics cards? You want to look for the things that matter to you. Does it have high-end onboard audio, like something like a Maximus 5 formula? Um, those are the things to really look for when you're choosing a high-end motherboard. Me, I pick a motherboard based on is it made by one of the big three manufacturers, Asus, MSI, Gigabyte, and uh, does it, like, match my color scheme and not make annoying noises? So everyone has their own criteria. Should I get an SSD or stick with my Velociraptor? Get an SSD. The answer to anyone who doesn't have an SSD already is get an SSD. Um, people who say that SSDs don't make an enormous difference to the performance of your PC have never used an SSD or they're blind or um, incapable of, I don't know, something. They're, they're, they're not paying attention because SSD is the biggest upgrade that you can make to your PC today. Um, upgrading your CPU is going to do almost nothing for the day-to-day -day usage of your computer versus upgrading from a hard drive to an SSD. It's like it's like when we went from single core to dual core. Dual core to quad core was no big deal. You could hardly tell the difference. Whereas single core to dual core was amazing. I spent $700 on an Athlon 64 X2 4400 plus and it was worth every penny. And I would do the same thing with SSD when it came out because that's how big of a difference it makes. Actually, that was the single most expensive component I ever spent my, my own, my own hard-earned dollars on was that $700 CPU. Uh, back on release day, I went to NCIX Burnaby and I bought one from Xenon, who still works there. He's awesome. Okay. Is your boss a cool guy? Yes, he is 100% a cool guy. Um, I wouldn't still be at NCIX if uh, my boss wasn't uh, outstanding. I mean, I, well, it's possible I would. I shouldn't say that, but uh, he's one of the big reasons why I'm still there. He's 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 just a fantastic boss. And that I'm not saying that because he's watching. I truly believe that. So I've made my way through most of the tweets that uh, that I had seen. Um, so I'm going to go back to some of the uh, some of the pre-scheduled questions um, from the from the Reddit thread. All right. Um, Ivaness or Ivan Vess, Ivan Vess says, Hi Linus, more and more people buy tablets and laptops these days, um, paying more to have a mobile work platform. PC parts are getting more expensive with the release of cheap tablets and low-end laptops. I think what he means to say is relatively more expensive compared to these cheap solutions. Is the PC in danger of being used only by hardcore gamers and people who do programming, networking, and multimedia? Instead of going forward and producing cheaper, smaller hardware that is a lot stronger than the last generation was, are we going backwards to a time when a good all-around PC is going to be a luxury while consoles and tablets take over the everyday use of a PC? Gaming, surfing, basic, edit basic editing, and so on. <sighs> Great question. Um, again, it comes down to the crystal ball thing, but I personally don't see tablets being able to realistically take over for PC anytime soon. I mean, any kind of two-part thing is never going to be a proper replacement for a PC and the demand for a higher performance and more storage and, and all of these things that enthusiasts desire will always continue to trickle down. I think what we're really seeing more than a disappearance of the PC is a slowing of the advancement in the technology. So what that means is is not that you're never going to have anything better to upgrade to or that you're not going to need a desktop PC anymore, but it means that you might not need to upgrade it as often anymore. So it used to be that every new generation that came out like six months after the previous one was like worth upgrading to, whereas now we're seeing more like smaller incremental improvements and, um, and people aren't, aren't upgrading all the time. It, another thing too is for the everyday like average Joe user, you know, like my parents, my parents are running a Phenom uh, X3 and that will be enough for them five years from now. They will never need more than that realistically. And I know this, you know, oh, Bill Gates, you'll never need more. That's a misquote, by the way, but um, re they really will. They really will never need more than that because they're not going to do more than word process. So that's what we run into where the average user is not getting a huge benefit from a new PC anymore. So that's why we're seeing that, that slowing down um, and we're seeing the market shrink a little bit. Um, but a PC will still be, um, will still be useful for different things than a tablet. You'll never sit and do your homework at a tablet. I can, I, I will peer into my crystal ball that I've referred to a lot already and I will tell you that it's not going to happen. Um, but 
just because the screen's not big enough. I mean, look how cheap monitors are getting. You can get a 27-inch monitor for less than a couple hundred bucks. You can get three of them, and you can have this enormous workspace that you will never have on your phone. It's not like so. So yes, the desktop will always have a place. Um, well, not always, but it will for a very, very long time. Uh, part two of his question was, do you expect AMD's new CPU platform to be closer to Intel than Phenom and Bulldozer were? And I can't really speculate on upcoming products, and the reality of it is I don't know yet. Um, I don't have one yet. Uh, Kohaku, I don't know how to pronounce that. What were the specs of the first PC you built yourself, and did anything go wrong? Uh, no, nothing went wrong. I had a very experienced guy helping me out. I had like a pro CS player, his name's Kyle. Um, helping me and he actually it's funny because the first PC I built myself was actually built by someone else before I built it myself so he and I did a, did an exchange program thing to Quebec together and uh, he got me sold on this whole idea of building my own computer and uh, so when we got back I used all the money I earned that summer to buy myself what I thought was a pretty wicked machine so I um, I got myself a 2500 plus a Soltec MRN 2L so this was like an onboard but it had GeForce 4 on board, so I figured it was pretty good. Okay, so onboard graphics, 512 megs of Samsung RAM, and I opted for the 80 gig drive with the 8 meg cache versus the 120 gig drive with the 2 meg cache because I was upgrading from like, um, oh man, it was something pathetic, like a, a 6 gig drive or a 10 gig drive or something, so I figured, whoa, 80 gigs is a lot anyway. I want that extra performance from the extra cache. Um, I picked myself up a, I think it was like a BenQ uh, CD burner, and it was all in an Antec Landboy, the original Landboy with the smart blue power supply. So uh, Kyle actually built the PC for me right in front of me. Then I took it, took it home, tore it completely apart, back to scratch, and then put it back together myself. So given I had watched an expert do it before I tried to do it myself, I didn't end up having any trouble. So if you guys want to take a similar approach, you can actually watch my PC build guide. If you search for PC build guide on YouTube, it's the first legitimate hit. And uh, that one was done with the intention of actually um, very little editing, showing every step so that people could literally buy their components, take it home, put that video on on their TV, and follow along and build their computer. So I think that covers that. Xbox so smart. At around what time did you start realizing your channels were heading for a successful trend? Was there backlash when you started monetizing it? And if so, how did you deal with that? Believe it or not, there was no backlash. Um, I've never really aggressively monetized my channel, so I've never really taken advantage of optional monetization. I know I have pre-roll ads now, but even when I did that poll where I asked people how they felt about it, the overwhelming majority said, if the money helps the Tech Tips project, then go for it. Monetize the content to your heart's content because we want more tech tips. And um, so based on and I didn't and then I didn't change it. So I've never really had any backlash. Um, as for when I started realizing that your channel, channels were heading for success, I mean we've always seen growth like this in terms of you know subscribers and uh, and views and all that kind of stuff. So um, you know, we, we, we thought we were headed for success right from the beginning, but we didn't ever really think it would be this big. And that's me and Cameraman. We were the, the only ones on the project for, you know, three, three and a half years. Um, John16144, okay, if you're on a budget, what is the least important component in a gaming computer to save money on? Um, your case. So many people I see configuring $800, $900 machines with a $150 case. If you're spending less than 1000 bucks, get a cheap case. Case doesn't help your performance. Uh, from F64, looking beyond cloud computing, what do you think is the next tick and or talk in the computer industry? Um, take care from Jason in whatever NC USA is. I'm sorry, my, uh, my US geography is not very good. Um, well, right now, I, I, think, I think it's more of an evolution of cloud. Uh, compared to compared to what we're seeing today, like right now, cloud computing isn't really even cloud computing. It's more like cloud storage, um, and that's where we're seeing most of the applications uh, in the cloud. Whereas I think cloud computing has yet to really take off. Where with things like um, with things like online uh, on live with their game streaming. Um, or you know things like I mean Netflix is sort of computing. There's a little bit of computing, but again, is mostly storage and 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 data distribution. So I think um, being able to use a thin client, whether it's a console or whether it's a PC, and have all of the actual work being done in the cloud in some data 
farm somewhere with a billion NVIDIA GPUs and a whole whack load of Xeon CPUs um, is where we're really headed. But before that can happen, we're going to need to see a huge evolution in network speeds. So networking is really where the advancement needs to happen and that's that's fiber because that's the only way we're ever going to get latencies close to where they need to be to truly sit down and use a computer and feel like you're using a local machine but you're actually not and especially in places like North America where the landmass is so big um, it'll be uh, I mean realistically it'll be decades before we get there um, to the point where you know someone who lives in rural Alberta is going to be able to use cloud computing in any meaningful way. We're still going to need local computing for a very long time. Whereas places like Japan, I mean, it could be around the corner because they're so dense. So you can spend all this money on infrastructure, but you can actually reach like a buttload of people with it. So it becomes much more worthwhile than in the U.S. and Canada, especially Canada, where I don't know if you you Yanks realize this, but uh, Canada has fewer people living in it than the state of California and is actually a significantly bigger landmass than the entire United States. So our population density is like, yeah. Okay. On your ultimate water cool build, how much of your hardware choices were influenced by the companies as opposed to your favorite products? Basically, how much do you determine what you endorse versus what you are paid to endorse? Great question because I don't actually get paid to endorse anything. I get paid by NCIX who is partners with almost everybody so anyone can have a fair crack at tech tips. I mean I don't know if you guys have noticed this but we'll look at ASUS motherboards all the way down to Buffalo routers. You know Buffalo is hardly the ASUS of routers. You know that would be you know a Cisco or a Linksys or a D-Link. Um, so, so everybody has a fair crack at tech tips and what I usually do is I'll look at it and I'll go, okay, um, oh, this is a great example actually where WD asked me, what NAS do you want to feature uh, with your WD RED showcase? So why am I doing a RED showcase? Well, because these drives are exciting and WD wants me to do a RED showcase. Why am I using a Synology NAS? Because I picked a Synology NAS. So I have a lot of influence in uh, which components I'm showcasing because I can go to almost anyone and say, okay, look, we want to showcase your part. Um, can you support us? And it's not that often that someone turns around and says no. So when you guys see that MSI gets a lot of love for their video cards on Tech Tips, there's a very good reason for that. The video cards I get really excited about, things like their 460 Cyclone back in the day or like their Hawk Edition cards are the ones that are truly unique and truly different from what other people are doing. That's why you don't actually see a lot of showcases for EVGA, for example, because most of their cards are kind of reference. Um, and now that they don't really have the lifetime warranty thing going on, you know, I'd rather talk about some. I'd rather talk about something that I can talk about because I can only, like motherboards, especially, are really hard now because they're often so similar. Unless there's something truly different about this one that I can really call out, it's very difficult for me to stand there and talk for six to eight minutes about it. Um, and fill in the time. So I, I, I like to and I prefer to find things that I truly think are interesting. So on the Ultimate Water Cooled build, I used primarily Swift Tech, partly because they were like, look, we'll help sponsor the episode, and partly because I'm a Swift Tech fanboy. You look at the parts that I'm using in my machine, I've got a Swift Tech Apple GHD gold plated that I bought, bought and paid for. That was totally my own money. I've got um, a Swift Tech water cooled GTX 590. I've got a SwiftTech MCP655 pump and I'm using, I was using an MC Res Micro up till recently and then I'm going to use the T-Virus. So um, other than boutique hardware like my T-Virus or my thick Thermochill PA120.4, my, my old school one, um, yeah, I'm a bit of a SwiftTech fanboy, so what do you want me to say? Okay, moving right along, let's do another page of these, uh, these pre-done questions before we start to do a little bit more live stuff and hopefully you guys aren't bored. Uh, what are my thoughts on Steam is one tweet that just came through, and I have a full episode on NCIX Tech Tips about Steam. I think it's the best thing since, like, this flower jar that is, like, cow patterned. So there you go. I love Steam. Steam is amazing and magical. It's the best possible implementation of DRM because it delivers uh, compelling value to me as the user as opposed to just restricting the way I use the product. I have no problem paying for stuff. But if you DRM it in such a way that it makes it worse than if I pirated it, then I get upset. Whereas if you DRM it in a way that makes my life better and easier, like the way Steam does, then yay. Oh, I didn't get my thumb in the right place. Yay. 
Um, at what point did manufacturers start sending review units to you? What advice can you give to a smaller site that might not have the advantage of review units? Um, I got review units pretty much right off the bat because I work at NCIX and I was able to use the relationships there. Um, so I don't know when if you were independent you'd manage to start being able to get any kind of review samples but I can tell you guys right now if you're expecting anyone to send you anything in the first two years it ain't gonna happen because until you can deliver some kind of a significant um, here's my value add I'm gonna deliver you at least 10,000 or 20,000 or 30,000 views and people are going to comment about your product they wanna see that they wanna know that's gonna happen unless you can really demonstrate that tough luck Chuck it's not gonna happen um, what advice can I give to a smaller site that might not have the advantage of review units? Um, this is going to sound kind of rough, but get a real job um, because what I do on the video side is not a real job. I have a nine to five. I have, um, I'm a product manager at NCIX. That's what I do for 40 to 50 hours a week. The video thing is above and beyond what I do for my real job. So it's very, very, there are very few locker gnomes out there. Did my mic move? Uh, there are very few Elric Elrics out there who are actually making a go of this. Um, and there are thousands of people who want to be a computer hardware reviewer. So unless you are one of the best, you know, maybe 10. I'm sorry, but it's, uh, it's not realistic. And I, I'm not trying to crush your dreams or anything. Feel free to, you know what, a great example of someone who did kind of pull it off without much manufacturer support is PC WizKid. Um, you know, I, I, I look up to what he, what he did on his own a lot because he mostly made his success through software tutorials, which costs you once. You just have to access the software and is also easier to solicit uh, samples for because software doesn't like physically cost anything. Whereas like for a $300 motherboard, realistically the bomb cost to gigabyte is somewhere in the $150 to $250 range. Like it actually costs them something. They need to see an ROI where a software is easier. Um, so that's one of the ways where you can really build up uh, an audience without, uh, without it being expensive to yourself or expensive to the, uh, to the software developers. From Dr. Kidde, I'm wondering if I get the same GPU but with more memory, will I get more FPS? What are the advantages to more memory in a GPU? You know what, I kind of covered this earlier in the live stream, so I'm just going to do this really quick. Um, unless you're pushing huge textures or huge resolutions, there's not much of an advantage. And also, if you're buying like a GT640 with 4 gigs of memory, it will make zero difference ever because by the time you're pushing a resolution or a texture quality that you'd need that much memory for, that GPU is choking and you're running at 1.5 FPS. So um, on very high-end graphics cards, especially in surround or uh, very large, mon large um, um, high-resolution monitors, yes, there's a benefit, but uh, it won't matter unless you're running out of memory. So a great way to find out if you'd benefit from more memory is use Afterburner to monitor your memory usage and see if you're maxing it out. Uh, Mindur sent in a question. At what price does one start to get diminishing returns on the quality of a home-built gaming PC? In other words, say I'm putting aside $100 a week to save for the parts to build my own computer. Around what week do I start getting less improvement in performance than the previous weeks? Um, I'd say you shouldn't be building a gaming computer for less than around $900 to $1,100. $1, um, below that, you're getting diminishing returns on your investment because you're getting low quality stuff or you're getting stuff where if you spent 20% more you'd get 40% more performance um, and then above that you again start to get diminishing returns so um, anything below so 660 Ti for example is a perfect sweet spot anything below a 660 Ti is not as good of a value right now anything above a 660 Ti is not as good of a value you gotta find that sweet spot we actually have a great episode on I think shopping for video card uh, with the theme of finding the sweet spot on the NCIX Tech Tips channel you guys wanna subscribe to NCIX Tech Tips you wanna check out that episode because it really explains how you can shop around and search for benchmarks and comparisons and then shop by price and cross-reference those to find what is the best value for your dollar. Ah, uh, Super Ninja. With 3D gaming being relatively new and still making um, lots of advancements, would you recommend getting into it now or waiting until it's more stable? Honestly, it's pretty stable. NVIDIA has only done one revision since they released 3D Vision and honestly HD 3D is totally set up and just 
oh man, it was an awful experience, even with the, the better middleware of the two that work. Just So 3D Vision, back to 3D Vision, because that's the one that sort of matters. Um, all they've done is they've changed the glasses once, which actually didn't, I mean, it changed the shape, but didn't inherently change the technology. And they've added Light Boost to the monitors. Light Boost is outstanding. Uh, light Boost makes all the difference in the world. So 3D is, is there. If you, do, if you get a headache from it, then you don't care about 3D. If you don't get a headache from it, you might care about 3D. And uh, there's no reason to not invest in it now because the reality of it is a 3D monitor at 120 hertz is a better and smoother gaming experience even if you're not in 3D if you care about responsiveness anyway. So there's lots of reasons to get the 3D hardware. And then after that, the glasses are only another 100 bucks. You can always borrow someone else's glasses that you know and you know try it before you buy. I always recommend with 3D, try before you buy. It's really important because lots of people just get headaches. 3D Vision V1, I get a splitting headache within about five seconds of putting on the glasses. Whereas with Light Boost and 3D Vision V2, um, I can go for a long time without actually feeling any discomfort. So it's pretty much there for me. I just don't prefer 3D to uh, large format, high resolution monitors. So when they can deliver a high resolution 4K 3D monitor to me, then thumbs up. But for now, I'll take my 2560 resolution versus my 1920 by 1080 120 hertz. It's a trade-off because there's only so much bandwidth a DVI connection can carry. Okay, Joseph42, four, Joseph4, four, writes in, Hey Linus, how do you manage to juggle spending time with your new child, your new wife, your job, your YouTube channels, and leisure and recreation? Um, it's hard, actually, to be perfectly honest. Thank you for asking, and thank you for understanding that what I'm doing is actually a lot of work. Um, I don't spend as much time with the baby as I should be doing, um, or with the wife as I probably should be doing. However, I'll be making some adjustments. This is part of the big announcement coming soon over the next, maybe next three months or so that uh, should help with that. Um, it's been difficult. I mean, my job is um, my job's stressful. My job is not easy. I'm a product manager and a category manager, and I still oversee the PC division of NCIX, and I do this YouTube stuff, so it's a lot of work, um, and it's a lot of hours, but... I'm hopefully going to try and find a way to, to cut that back a little bit gradually here. Uh, the YouTube channels, again, I, this comes back to why do I keep making videos? Because I actually do have fun. I like engaging with you guys. I like, um, I like educating people. I like sharing my passion. Um, as for leisure and recreation, I've, found, I've played badminton six or seven times since the baby was born. So that's in the last four months. So I haven't find, found much time for my leisure activities. But uh, you know, again, hopefully I'll be able to restore some balance over the next little while here. Um, Norhor, great name. What is the difference between the SATA ports on my motherboard? There's different speeds, and that's self-explanatory, but I wonder about that some of them are connected to a third-party controller, and some of them are linked directly to the motherboard chipset. Why aren't they all connected to either the motherboard chipset or a third-party controller, and which should I use for normal operation or RAID? Great question, because it really depends on the configuration of your board. So. Um, for a single boot drive or like two RAID 0 boot drives, always use the two Intel SATA 3 6 gigabit, uh, bleh, bleh, 6 gigabit per second connections. They are the best performing and they're not going through any additional PCIe switches or anything like that, so they have a direct communication path to the CPU. Now the reason that, excuse me, many manufacturers are implementing additional SATA ports is because Intel's chipset only supports six ports. So I'm going to see if I can point at this. See, there's lots more ports there. Um, so if they want to give users the flexibility or the option to install more drives, then they have to use third-party chipsets. And it's that simple. Oh, yeah, and the Intel chipset only supports two SATA 3 6 gigabit per second ports and then four SATA 2 3 gigabit per second ports. So, yeah, if they want to add more, then they have to do it through, through third-party chipsets. Uh, it comes down to what the, what the mother or what the chipset manufacturer, that is AMD or Intel, uh, specs in. So why aren't they all one or the other? Because the motherboard makers think you need more. They, they, they want you to have more. Okay. Uh, Linus Fan 007. Wow, that's um, not you know, sucking up at all. Uh, hi, Linus. You know, I'm one of your biggest fans. I did not know that, but thank you. I have seen almost all uploaded YouTube videos, but sadly, you have never replied to me. Well, here's my reply. Thank you for watching. 
Anyways, can I ask your full name and please mention my name, Atif Munir, in your Q&A session and will you upload the session later on YouTube? Yes, I will. And lastly, your cats are cute. And yes, I know. Thank you. Um, my full name is Linus Sebastian. If you'd watched all my videos, you'd know that because on my early videos, I actually say my full name at the beginning of every single one. Um, so bam, you just got called out, sucker. Um, but then you asked to be called out, so I think we're still, we're still cool. Um, last question on my pre-scheduled questions from Crumpets95. What are your reasons for not using dedicated benchmarking software to test components? Is there a tested reason behind your decision or do you just prefer to get more realistic test environments? Would you like to see other tech channels move away from benchmarking software? Uh, the reason I stopped using benchmarking software is because it is totally meaningless. Um, there's some things where benchmarking can tell you useful information like with storage, um, whereas there's other things like video cards where all of the pre-canned benchmarks are so heavily optimized and played around with by both in NVIDIA and AMD that it becomes not a useful comparison of the power of one piece of hardware versus the other one. So that's why the only way to truly gauge the performance of these parts is to use real games. You can't use specs, you can't use canned benchmarks, forget about it. Use real games uh, or your, you know, real men use real games. There, I'll say that. So now, since I'm done with all of the pre-submitted questions, oh my goodness, okay, Twitter has, check this out you guys. 350 new interactions since last time I looked at it. Come on, guys. Realistically, I am not going to be able to answer all of them, um, but I'll hang around for a little while longer. I did intend to do only a one-hour live stream, and we're at an hour and five minutes, but uh, yep, I'll hang around a little bit more. So I'm going to have a look at some of the more recent tweets just because I think the odds of some of the earlier tweets still being watching the live stream seems lower. I'm actually overwhelmed. Thank you guys for watching, by the way, because there's 2,000 viewers right now, which is just, just amazing to see the kind of support you guys are, are giving to this kind of a new initiative from me. All right. Hey, Linus, can you please do an unboxing video on some Dell? No. Um, again, this comes down to you know how much of what I do is sponsored and how much of what I do is my choice. So number one, by choice, I don't really have any interest in Dell products beyond their monitors. And number two, Dell is a direct competitor for NCIX, so I have no desire as an NCIX employee to support them. So, no. Uh, when do you think DisplayPort will become more of a standard? I have no idea. Um, everyone seems very reluctant to 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 move away from DVI. And I mean, even VGA is on so many things still today. I wish it would just go away. Um, I mean. Every video card has had a DVI port for, what, six, seven, eight years now? Like every decent video card? Right now, it's still only, especially on the NVIDIA side, the high-end video cards that even have DisplayPort outputs. So what that means to me is we are nowhere near widespread adoption. Like nowhere even close. You look at how long it, like, we'll probably have a new standard by the time DisplayPort is completely dominant, like the way we had DisplayPort by the time DVI was completely dominant. So, yeah. Uh, get Slick to do reviews and unboxings for you so you have more free time. Uh, if Slick wanted to be on the camera, he could be. So, there's that. I have a VGA monitor, 1440 by 900. Would it be better investment to buy a 1080p monitor or upgrading my graphics card? FPS lag in Battlefield 3, get a new graphics card and a new monitor, but do the graphics card first, Victor. Um, Sabertooth Computing, do you think that the power cover 7990 will beat the GTX 690 performance wise? That's really easy. Do two 7970s beat two 680s performance wise? There's no special sauce in these dual GPU cards. They're just two GPUs and instead of an external SLI bridge connecting two video cards, there's an internal SLI bridge on a PCB connecting two graphics chips. So um, you can you can usually deduce how, uh, like people have been asking me for months, how do you think a 7990 will perform? Exactly like two 7970s or, you know, depending on the clock speed or how many, how many um, shaders they have active or whatever else. Alexander says, I'm looking in buying a keyboard and I'm going to use it for FPS games. I'm looking at the Black Widow Ultimate or the Zybel 60. Get the Zybel 60. The Black Widow Ultimate's build quality is yeah compared to the Zybel 60 or something from the likes of Philco. I... Do -do -do -do. Let's see. Sorry, I'm going to read these. I'm going to try and find some of the more interesting ones so all 1,927 of you don't have to sit through really boring stuff. Um, 
Linus, what are your steps to diagnosing a DOA motherboard or component? I have a motherboard I believe is DOA. What would you do? I have a video. I would watch the video. It's called No Post Diagnosis. If you search for it on YouTube, it's on my NCIX.com channel, and it should pretty much walk you through the steps that you need to go through to determine what is wrong with your computer. I have a GTX 570. Would you advise to add another 570 or just get a 660 Ti? Usually, I find the better value is from selling your existing card and then buying a new one. Um, however, it depends how much you can get for your card, depends how much the new one costs, so you'll have to do the math. I mean, it's a calculation. You just like punch it into a spreadsheet. You know, you look up a review, how much better does a 670 perf or it says a 660 Ti perform? And then you go, how much can I sell this one for? How much is this one going to cost me? How much am I paying for per performance increase? And you go from there. It's not rocket science. Okay, what power supplies do you think are better, single rail or multiple rail? Um, I don't think it makes much of a difference these days. Multi-rail power supplies are well laid out so that you're not going to trigger the overcurrent protection on any decent multi-rail power supply. So go with whatever you think looks good and has a good review at Johnny Guru. Basically, the only power supply reviews that matter, Johnny Guru. Um, can I get Gabe Newell on my show? Um, Gabe, if you're watching, come on the show. Other than that, probably not. Um, I've got a question for your live stream. What education did you have to get your job? Um, actually, I flunked out of University of British Columbia um, after a couple years there. Um, I was in the general science program and uh, did, couldn't cut it. You know, that's rough. Um, and then I went to work as a sales guy at NCIX in Langley. And then from there, um, they noticed that my uh, the, the sell prices of my computer systems were like some ridiculous number, like 40 or 60 percent higher, or like double or something. Like it was just ludicrous. Were double the average computer um, cost of almost any other sales guy in the company. And they they asked me about this. They were like, "What are you doing? Like, like are you just a fantastic sales guy?" And I went, "Well, no. I'm telling people what they need because people come in and they're like, yeah, I want to play like Half Life 2 on max details, and I'm not going to be like some dumb sales guy and be like, oh yeah, you know." Um, I don't know, here's the top thing in like the on sale list and you know, get one of these. I'm gonna be like, well no, you know, you need like two seventy nine hundred GTs and SLI. You wanna build like a flight sim computer and you wanna run like, you know, triple monitors. I mean back then it was harder. You need like two of these and this is the best value and if you spend more money on this video card but then you drop down the CPU but then you get a better motherboard then you'll be able to do this and then you can add more RAM and so what I really did was I helped people, this is exactly the same thing I do now, I helped people configure their machine such that they would come in a week after they got it and they'd be like oh man Linus I am so happy that I spent the extra here and I saved the money there and this computer is amazing and um, you know I'm so glad that you helped me with this. And that I always took satisfaction from that. So from there, they asked me to come to head office and work on the PC configurations on the website. Um, one day, I was like, oh, well, why don't we sell any water cooling stuff? And my boss at the time said, well, get on it then. So uh, that was how I got into product management. So I was still managing the PCs. And then I started contacting all these water cooling suppliers and bringing on all this water cooling stuff. And then NCIX started to make a bunch of money from that. So they went, oh, maybe we should use this guy to do like more product management on higher level stuff. And uh, then I was good at that. So then they asked me to manage other people. Um, other product managers from a category level um, while still maintaining my product portfolio and then somewhere in there all the YouTube stuff started happening and that's kinda how it happened I mean I think that you know education is important you know I can't emphasize that enough even though I don't really have a proper one but if you are willing to work your tushy off and uh, if you have like a talent and a skill that um, and you and you have a little bit of luck. I mean, it takes luck, you know, for someone to even notice you and give you a chance. Then uh, you can you can really do a lot even without the piece of paper. So um, yeah, there. That's that's how I, that's how I got my job. Okay. Let me just see if there's anything else here that I haven't. Stephen. Big three: ASUS, Gigabyte, MSI. Anything else for a number of reasons that I'm not going to get too far into probably doesn't make sense. Um, I have a question. Can you use USB 2 devices in a USB 3 port? Yes, you can. Uh, Pontus, in answer to your question. 
let's do about another I don't know let's do about another seven minutes here guys so I'm gonna hopefully get to your uh, to your questions ah Maurice writes in what do you think of Korean monitors like the Yamakaze Cat Leap or Achieva Shimian Linus I think that they are using lower grade panels so if you are a super discerning customer then you probably won't be that thrilled with it so for me I looked at them and I considered buying three because I love high-res monitors um, love high pixel density I love multi monitor setups and right now I'm only using a single 30 inch and I was like okay but if I buy three what are the odds I'm gonna have bright dots or dead pixels am I really happy with the industrial design of this bezel or would I rather just save my pennies for another even if I have to save for another year or two I personally believe your monitor is one of the most important things you buy for your computer I've bought three monitors in my life for my personal machine I have bought a ViewSonic P95F plus B that was pretty much the best 19 inch CRT you could get um, it used aperture grill in order to make sure that the geometry was perfect it had great color and my sister in a fit of rage at one point took a quarter and scratched the anti-glare coating and I was devastated because now I had to go first to okay sorry I had four monitors so after that that monitor I didn't really have a lot of money because I hadn't been saving up for a monitor I wasn't expecting to have to buy one and I bought myself an Acer 191916 W or something it was VGA only it was uh, 1440 by 900 res it was a 19 inch LCD and I was just so dissatisfied with um, with a value monitor that I vowed and so I bought myself a Dell 2405 FPW um, I bought it used I paid about 600 bucks for it and uh, that monitor is still in use today so this is about six and a half years down the road so this is again this comes back to my philosophy about monitors why do you buy a good monitor because it might still be on your desk six seven years down the road my wife's still using that monitor and then um, three years ago I um, I needed a monitor for her machine so that she could play games and I decided to save up for a while and I got myself a Samsung 305 T plus so I got myself a nice this is what I really wanted when I bought that 24 inch but they were like two grand at the time so it wasn't gonna happen but finally they'd come down to a price that I could that I could save up for and I got myself one of those which I'm still using to this day I will not upgrade my monitor again until I can buy 4k at a reasonable price um, or until I can get some kind of compelling new technology that delivers dramatically better brightness or color something like AMO LED in a 30 inch or 27 inch high pixel density format so I believe that um, I believe that monitors are an investment like speakers and headphones and sound cards and they're not something to be cheaped out on like um, you know video cards and CPUs and memory you know buy only as much memory as you need whereas you should overbuy on your monitor and your speakers and your case and the things that are you're gonna carry with you through multiple builds I mean I've had a dozen video cards in the time that I've had two monitors so that should tell you how much of an investment a monitor is worth to me versus a video card that said they're a great value so if you're looking to save a buck and you want to experience high res then hey go for it right okay why is there such a performance gap between the AMD 7, 7000 series and the 600 series from NVIDIA I don't think there is uh, when you overclock them both they're actually in a dead heat so um, I've got a great video coming out soon with the 660 Ti 7950 7870 and I think 670 and I overclocked them all to the max to see where performance actually lines up and the 7950 does really well especially given the new pricing that it's at these days Okay, what's the difference between Sandy Bridge and Ivy Bridge and what's the best for gaming? Ivy Bridge is newer and faster. Uh, Sandy Bridge runs a little cooler and is older. Best for gaming, they're pretty similar. Uh, Kyle, do I tweet you or do I comment on the YouTube live stream? Do not comment on the YouTube live stream. I understand it's probably a little late to say this, but those comments come through like 50 at a time. I can't read them and I'm not even looking at it. Twitter's good. Um, or I'm gonna be doing before I do any of these live streams I'll be posting on the YouTube channel a link to a reddit thread um, which will allow people to vote up the the comments or the questions that they think are our best and uh, that actually worked really well for this live stream I think unless you guys have sort of another comment that you think it didn't work um, Anders all usernames are taken okay what do you prefer Intel or AMD also NVIDIA or AMD ATI some of my most popular videos on YouTube if you search for AMD versus Intel or AMD versus NVIDIA 
Um, I have videos on it already, so go for it. Check it out. That's what I think. The answer is there's no answer. If you want me to cheat. Um, N N Nilesh Jayashenka um, says, why are high-end NVIDIA Quadro cards more expensive than GeForce cards? Because those customers are willing to pay more. And also the validation and software development that goes into those cards costs a lot more. The support that NVIDIA has to provide to customers of those cards costs a lot more. So you know what? Okay, um, since we still have questions pouring in and there's still over 2,000 people watching, we're going to keep going a little bit longer, but I need to get myself something to drink because I have been talking for 80 minutes straight, which even for me is like a bit of a challenge, so I'll be back in a sec. no drink for me. Yes, drink for me. Someone just tweeted no drink for you, but they're wrong. Who is that? Corey McBeath, you're banned. You're no longer invited to view my live stream because I am going to enjoy this Tropicana, whether you like it or not. And yes, Tropicana, the best orange juice, something, something, paid product. No, I'm just kidding. There's no paid product placements here. Um, I'm just drinking Tropicana because I like it. And my wife bought some. And... Um, so it's my job to consume it, as far as I can tell, when she buys things and puts them in the fridge, which is amazing. So I'm sorry, I'm going to move the mic so that you guys don't have to hear like my drinking noises. All right, so I'm going to stop looking at some of the older Twitters, Twitters, tweets, and let's get to some of the newer ones again. So... Uh, I'm going to look at the 229 new interactions here, and hopefully uh, we'll get some we'll get some good questions that we can answer. Alex, really looking forward to Windows 8. Does a 10 to 12 inch touchscreen monitor I can put flat on my desk exist? Would love that to control Metro. Great idea. You know what? I mean, uh, that's the kind of stuff that Windows 8 is going to enable. I'm personally not excited for Windows 8 on my personal desktop, but I'm excited for Windows 8 on different devices, and I'm going to cover that in this week's episode of Netlinked Weekly, which I actually still have to edit and, uh, and upload tonight because Slick, bless his heart, is at PAX and uh, is therefore not available to me at this point in time, so I, I, have to, I have to edit it myself, although there's not much editing with Netlinked Weekly, and I did have Cameraman to help me film it. Would I recommend an FX8150 or should I just wait for Piledriver? You should just buy an Intel CPU, to be perfectly honest, at this point in time. Um, I, I know, I know, it's hard, but um, just get a 2500K or a 3570 and call it a day. Ah, Phil writes in, what do you think about the whole Samsung-Apple debacle? Um, I think they both need to grow up. Um, I think they're both wrong. I think they're both right. Um, I think that that much is clear based on that in certain territories, one of them's winning in certain territories, the other one's winning. Um, I think that ultimately this is going to be a, uh, a negative thing for consumers because it's going to damage the relationship that these two companies have where Samsung provides a lot of the quality components that go in Apple products. And um, yeah, it's, I think it's just bad for everybody. It's bad for innovation. It's bad for... Apple's bottom line, although I don't really feel that bad for Apple, they seem to be doing okay. Um, I mean, that said, I'm 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 with them on certain things, where you know I I don't think it's fair for again you know it comes back to any product. I don't think it's fair for Synology to develop this NAS and for someone else to basically, you know, like use a 3D printer to print out the same thing and then. Uh, you know, brand it differently and for them to make a bunch of money off the work that ultimately someone else did and the branding that someone else did. Something that a lot of um, a lot of hardcore IT tech customers don't understand is the amount of work and the amount of design and the amount of thought that goes into things that don't actually affect performance. Like the amount of engineering that went into Apple determining that this is the ideal shape um, is phenomenal. And 
I don't think you should be able to patent a shape per se, but I also don't think that you should just be, you know, pulling out your telescope and being like, oh, what are those guys doing? Let's do sort of that because they seem to know what they're doing and they're making boatloads of money. So, um, again, I don't think anyone's right. I don't think anyone's really wrong. Um, let's see. Best mechanical keyboard. Don't say the Corsair. It's too blue. This is from Josh. I wouldn't have said the Corsair because I don't like red switches, but I'm my personal favorite right now is the Mionix Zybel 60. That's the one I'm using on my personal machine. Um, Adam Kochan writes in, what is the absolute best time to buy computer parts? Uh, in Canada, Boxing Week. In, uh, in the US, probably Black Friday. He already knew the answer. He asked if those were the right times, and so yes, they are. Uh, Tracksmate says, I have a stuck pixel right over your face. Do you know any way to get rid of stuck pixels? Actually, I, uh, there are a couple tricks that don't always work, but if you look for, uh, here, I'm just going to check really quick, but I think it's YouTube search. Uh, what is a dead pixel? That should bring up my video about dead pixels and stuck pixels. What is a dead pixel? And I am hit number one with 120,000 views. Bam! Take that, everyone else who tried to make a video about dead pixels. Ha ha! Um, not that I'm gloating or anything because my YouTube videos are way better than theirs, but they are. Uh, Taylor says, Linus, I'm up at 2 a.m. trying to get you to answer. Store in Ottawa, possibly. Probably not coming anytime soon. Any, com any plans to compare the H100 and ELC 240? Um, probably not anytime soon. Um, I mean, honestly, the, these pre-done liquid coolers aren't rocket science. They're all using low-end craptastic CPU blocks, so we can assume that they're all kind of similar. And then it comes down to how much surface area is the radiator and how good are the fans that you put on it. And you basically shouldn't use any fans that are included with any of them anyway, so just get a good fan and put it on there and call it a day. Uh, Damien says, dude, I'm late, sorry. Then in that case, I'm not going to answer your question. Actually, I will. Uh, but did you talk about the 60 hertz versus 120 hertz video yet? The game wasn't getting 120 FPS, man. It doesn't matter. Um, and yes, I did cover this already, so I can't really go too far into this. But it doesn't matter uh, because you guys will see in the follow-up video that you, what, that whatever you see in the follow-up video makes a difference. And that'll be coming hopefully sometime in the next week or so. So, say, so, so week or so. So stay tuned. Matthew, what is the max could you have your GTX 660 Ti? I just bought one, non-overclocked, and I was wondering. Well, it depends which one you bought. If you have a power edition, you can probably get another 200 plus megahertz on the, uh, on the boost clock. If you didn't buy a power edition, then you might get another 80, 90 megahertz. Julian, will NCIX expand to Malaysia? We certainly won't physically expand, expand to Malaysia anytime soon, but it's possible we'll start shipping there sometime in the future. I mean, the world continues to shrink. I don't know if you guys saw that news article about the, uh, about the plane that they did a test flight of and then just dropped it in the ocean at the end. It was doing something like three times the speed of sound or something along. I don't, I don't remember. It was like quite a few times the speed of sound, and uh, the military and Boeing and a bunch of other big names are trying to figure out if it's commercially viable. Uh, test Tester apparently created a fake Twitter account just so that he could follow me and comment to me. Thank you for that, I suppose. Um, are you doing more of this later? Certainly not later tonight, but I will be doing more live streams at some point in the future. Um, I haven't decided what kind of a schedule or what they're going to be about, but based on that, there's almost 2,100 people watching now. I would say that uh, this is good content that people want to see, so yeah, I'm going to keep doing it. Um, will you do this for the rest of your life? Asks Raul. Do you have any long-term plans? Do you have any long-term plans? He sounds like my dad. Um, I have no idea what the future holds. I mean, I never would have guessed six years ago that I'd be doing this today. So six years from now, who knows, man. Vincent, what is your preferred panel type for gaming? VA, IPS, please, PLS, etc. cetera. Um, personally, I prefer better colors. Um, and better viewing angle for gaming. Um, there's something to be said for a 120 hertz TN panel, and that's a great gaming experience, um, especially if you want 3D. But um, I love PLS monitors. I love Samsung's PLS monitors. So, um, like, big fan. Um, I still use my just because of that PLS panel. Man, it's beautiful. Um, I'll take a Tegra 2 with a PLS versus a Tegra 3 with an IPS Plus. 
Deacon, what do you think of three slot graphics cards? I think they're fine. Um, I think that they have their use, but I probably wouldn't use one just because it really limits how many expansion cards you can install on your computer. So, you know, it's great for cooling, but then so is water cooling. So, it comes down to personal preference on that one. I probably shouldn't have even answered that question because I can't really say anything. Timothy, what do you think about the Cyborg Strike 7? I think it's ridiculous. I think it's like a $300 keyboard, but I'm also extremely excited about it. So I have one inbound. I am looking forward to checking it out. It's going to come down to the software. If the software makes it like awesome to use, then it'll be awesome. And if the software sucks, then it'll suck. So Raul asks, how much are you making from YouTube? I think what he means to ask is how much do I make at my job at NCIX because that's where I make money, not uh, not from YouTube. And it's also very rude to ask someone how much money they make. So, Raul, that's two strikes for you. Actually, I think your other one wasn't really a strike, so we're all good. Don't worry about it. One strike. Jason, have you ever looked back at some of your very first NCIX videos? Uh, absolutely. Every once in a while, I go back and uh, and and check out one of the old ones. Just it's encouraging to see how far we've come and also discouraging to see how terrible it was when we first started but uh, no it's kinda it's kinda fun um, I was trying to show Slick the episode where we did Monitor Man where I had a big monitor in front of me um, the monitor that I ultimately ended up buying and then I stood behind it and I waved my arms around to the side and it was just totally ridiculous and so uh, we, we went through some of the older videos then it was kinda of, uh, kind of fun actually uh, let's see Got a question for you. Okay, not a very good question. How, which games does your wife play? Do you play Call of Duty Black Ops or Modern Warfare 3? No, I don't play Call of Duty. Call of Duty is for console people. Sorry, Rodrigo. Um, as for what games my wife plays, um, she's she's played through Trine, Trine 2. Um, she also used to be pretty into Left 4 Dead with me, but we've had so little time for gaming once we moved into the new house and then had a baby and everything. So she she plays pretty much no games anymore. Uh, Pedro, any way to stop motherboard coil wine? Uh, it used to be easier back when the components were actual like coils that you could like see and you could put like you know hot glue on them or nail polish. Uh, these days, not really a whole lot you can do. <laughs> Yasin, Belmyhub, Belmyhub, do you plan on creating a new NCIX shop in Montreal? I think it would be really interesting as there's not much PC shops here. Uh, the easy answer is probably not because um, Quebec, as soon as you have a physical location there, they want to slap all kinds of regulations on you and um, that's not that great. So, yeah. Curtis, how did you meet your wife? Good question. Uh, we met at, at uh, UBC, University of British Columbia. We met in school. So uh, we met in some kind of horrible microbiology class that we were both taking in. Um, yeah. We got to know each other because I'm not that bright and uh, she was tutoring me in math and uh, one thing led to another and now we're married. That was, wow, that was like eight years ago now. Crazy. Um, hmm. Yeah, I think we're kind of running out of new questions at this point so maybe what I'll do is I will... Uh, I'll check out some of the newest tweets and then I think we'll uh, we'll call this quits for tonight. All right, let's go back up to the top. 219 new interactions. Apparently you guys have not yet tired of sending in tweets. What does my wife do? asks Paul. Oh, she's a pharmacist. NCIX store in Alberta. Um, you know what? I can't really comment on future NCIX plans, although NCIX is, you know, a Canadian chain, so it's not impossible. Um, Sam, Zybel 60 versus DAS Keyboard Ultimate. Um, blue versus black switches. Personally, I prefer blues, but they're too loud. And the blacks on the Zybel 60 are feel more like blues than regular blacks. Like, they have more weight to them. They feel good. Um, so I'm using a Zybel 60. Uh, Brennan, how did Slick and I meet, and are we good friends? Yes, we're friends. Um, but I'm also his boss, so there's that sort of weird dynamic there. Um, and we met when I created a video, um, a video sort of call out to my YouTube followers that I needed to find the next NCIX Tech Tips assistant. He was one of the, 
I think I got something like 60 or 70, 80 applicants. And um, he was one of the uh, six to eight, I forget how many, about, how many did I interview? I might have interviewed as many as 10. Like he was one of about 10 people that I interviewed. And uh, he, he's, his, his camera work I know is suspect at best, um, but he's very technical. He's able to help me in ways that some of the other people wouldn't have with the prep work that's involved in Tech Tips, which is honestly, um, in terms of creating what I believe is better content is more important than necessarily the perfect camera angle or whatever else because what we really want to do is we want to test things and work on things and tell you guys the information you want to know um, and he's better at that. Um, so And also we got along really well in the interview so that was one of the other reasons I ended up going with him although there were at least three or four other applicants that honestly I felt terrible um, calling them up and telling them that, that, uh, that they didn't get the job because they would have been really, really qualified as well. I got, I got a lot of really good applicants. Um, Linus, do you work actively with customers around Vancouver in the NCIX shops? Asks Arthur Lee. Uh, no, I work out of head office. Uh, Mark asks if I can speak French. Um, if you put French in front of me, my accent is decent. Um, however, it's been a long time since I've spoken French on a daily basis and a lot of it has just disappeared. Um, if I got immersed again for, you know, a couple months, then I'd probably be back up to speed, but uh, right now it's pretty rough, so I'm not, not going to try. Um, Sophia asks me to shout out to her brother, Sam Alphabet. He loves my videos. Hi, Sam. <laughs> Riaz asks, do you visit other NCIX stores like Burnaby and do people recognize you in the supermarket? Uh, it's happened once. I was in my full paintball gear after a long day of paintball, so I looked absolutely terrible. And some guy walked up to me in Superstore of all places and was like, oh, hey, you're the NCIX YouTube guy. And I was like, oh, yeah, man. Hi. Thank you. Nice to meet you. And, <laughs> And uh, one of one of the other really good ones was uh, was at a badminton tournament when um, some guy like destroyed me and uh, me and my partner. This was a doubles match, and at the end of it, we go up to the uh, to the net to you know shake hands and you know thanks for you know good game, good game. And the guy's like, "Oh man, I, I ever since I recognized you on the other side of the court, I've wanted to shake your hand. That's awesome. You do those videos." I'm like, "Oh okay," <laughs> and it's like embarrassing because now the guy like knows who I am, and I just got like crushed in a doubles match, and so it's uh, uh, pretty humiliating, but whatever. It's all good. I mean, I've gotten more used to it. Um, it used to be really weird for me. I think one of, maybe the weirdest one still was the time that, um, that I was in a McDonald's and I was actually with the cameraman and we were getting some food and uh, he and I were talking about something totally unrelated to tech tips and the guy at the counter turned around and went, is that Linus? And I was like, no way! He actually recognized me from my voice, not from my face, which is... Uh, I mean, I know I have a bit of a sort of annoying, distinctive voice. Since so, so that was that was a really weird one. Ah, uh, David asked, "Who's your internet provider, and what speed, and how much do you pay?" I pay about eighty bucks a month. I'm using Shaw, and I have a fifty megabit down. I think it's either ten or fifteen megabit up. Um, I needed the better connection for the faster uploads because I'm frequently uploading one, two gig files um, and it was just too slow waiting for the regular broadband connection. MAB says, can you tweet about these earlier? I missed 80 minutes of this one. Mab, man, I got to tell you, I tweeted about this quite a few times over the last few days, so make sure you are checking your Twitter. And uh, I also, um, I put something in the YouTube feed. So, um, yeah, sorry, dude. Um, got to stay on the ball because I talked about this as about as much as I can uh, without just spamming people. Oh, watch the live stream, watch the live stream, watch the live stream. So, you know, I want people to tune in if they want to tune in, not tune in because I spammed them for the five previous days telling them when the live stream was coming. Thomas asks, does Slick live in my house? The answer is no. Uh, Slick lives uh, about half an hour away from me. But um, he ought, because he lives, like he lives here, and I live here, and NCIX is here. So he often drives to my house, and then we carpool together to NCIX and back, film a few more videos, and then he goes home. So, so that's why he's often here. 
How's the baby? Good. Thanks for asking, Nikhil. Alex says, you have really white teeth. What's your secret? Um, believe it or not, my, my, my oral hygiene could be better. Um, I, I only brush my teeth. Um, I don't like do anything special. I don't use like you know special whitening strips or anything like that. Um, I use Sensodyne, like the purple one with baking soda, um, and it seems to work. So there you go. Paid product placement for Sensodyne toothpaste. It's like five dollars a tube though. What a scam! Kills me. I get the big packs at Costco though, which helps a little bit. Brian. Care to talk about your earrings? I think we are all a bit curious about them and why you chose that style. Um, I just like them. Um, as for as for why I wear uh, as for why I wear hoops, they're sleepers, and sleepers are significantly more comfortable because they can spin around. You can kind of sit at your desk and like play with them, and uh, they don't catch on anything because they don't have I don't, like I don't know how much well you guys are going to be able to see this, but they don't have an actual hinge. They're just uh, they're just completely round all the way around, so the way that they clip together, for those of you who aren't chicks and don't know about earrings, is uh, is very, oops, like there's, oh gross, there's like skin gunk on it, sorry for that. Um, so they they come together like very, very cleanly, and then they come up, see, they've got a bit of a clip inside, so um, they're very comfortable. Um, why do I keep the earrings? Uh -huh. I just like them. I got I got earrings back when I was uh, back when I was younger, back when I was about I don't know, grade six, high school. I continued to get more of them. I used to have an eyebrow piercing, um, and I used to dye my hair like wacky colors pretty frequently. Um, I don't know. They just kind of stuck with me. I haven't changed them or anything. Like it's not a fashion statement, really. I just uh, I like them. My wife doesn't complain about them, and I don't, you know, really care about what other people think beyond that. So, um, Raul. I meant are you satisfied with AdSense earnings because I am a YouTube partner myself. Once again, can't comment on AdSense earnings, man. That's two strikes. Um, as for if you're a YouTube partner, then you should know all about your AdSense earnings anyway. Byzantine, can you use Twitch TV or other so we can give you money from the ads? You deserve the money. I think there's ads on this or there's not. I mean, it doesn't matter. I mean, Like I said, I have a paycheck. I don't rely on YouTube revenue, so... Uh, don't worry too much about it. Um, as for as for Twitch TV, I mean, I think that even you know, two thousand people probably isn't that much for some of the bigger streaming sites. So I'd rather instead of instead of bringing everything outside of the Google ecosystem, I prefer to just keep things simpler for myself and use the products that I know how to use. Now that I've figured out how to do this whole Hangouts thing, um, it's not as brutal as it was the first couple times where it was pretty disorganized. Andromeda says, more retro unboxings, please. You know what? There's not really any more totally dead stock in the warehouse. Otherwise, I would. That was just some stuff that I randomly found on a shelf, and I was like, oh, I'll unbox it. Ha-ha. Um, so there isn't, there isn't really any old stuff there anymore. Sorry, man. Uh, Ahmed Karam says, what do you think of the Retina Display MacBook Pro? I am so big into dense pixel displays. Pixel density is everything to me. I would love to have a MacBook Pro with a Retina display, but the first thing I do is I'd get OS X off of it and I'd put on Windows 7. Um, it's a beautiful machine. You know, people who run around and you know bash Apple, saying that it's crap hardware, they don't understand uh, what goes into building a truly beautiful piece of hardware um, that is solid and well built. And the only thing I don't like about it is OS X. Uh, I'd love to have a MacBook. I mean, you know, there's something to be said for this kind of style of device. Holy crap, it's like videoception, right? Um, for this style of device, you know, but, you know, you see like that flex, you know, that uh, you know, the, kind of that cheesiness factor where, you know, it works for me, it works for gamers, but you can't show up at a business meeting with this notebook, guys. <laughs> like, it's not, <laughs> it's not right. <laughs> Um, Travis, I'm building a PC soon. Any tips? Uh, check out my PC build guide. Just search for PC build guide on YouTube. I think I'm the first hit, and those are my tips. Wesley wants to know when am I going to make more videos about my server? Um, actually, I'm going to be doing a really cool one soon. So I've got two servers now. One of them is the 20 terabyte server. That's my home server. And then one of them is an 8 terabyte drive. So I think it works out to about 6 terabytes of actual storage. Um, off-site backup server, so I'm going to show you guys the software configuration, which is only costing me a hundred bucks, that's going to allow me to do nightly syncs from the one server to the other one of my most important data, which means even if someone breaks in and steals my server outright or my house burns down, at least I'll have 
all of my pictures of my baby and you know all my home videos and the stuff that I actually care about um, somewhere else. It'll probably be at like my wife's parents' house or my parents' house or something. Brock, what's the worst computer experience you've ever had? Oh man, I wouldn't even be able to begin to tell you because the reality of working with pre-release hardware with pre-release drive drivers and and you know not having the benefit of being able to Google and see if someone else had the problem because it doesn't exist yet is that there's no support for problems and uh, and problems are frequent at best. <laughs> Uh, so I, I'm so sorry, man. I don't even know. Uh, Phil Cooper wants to know: Are you going to update to a DSLR? Seriously, man, fix that focus. Yes, we'll be getting a better camera at some point. Um, the reality of it is, we have a limited budget for tech tips. I try to keep it a, like a low cost project, um, but we will be getting a new camera at some point. We thought the Canon AX10 or XA10 or whatever it is was going to be um, something we could use for everything. But honestly, I hate that thing. It is such a piece of crap. It never remembers our settings. Um, the white balance is always all over the place, even though we have it set to a fixed color temperature. Um, I just hate that camera. So a DSLR is definitely the solution. I'm really hoping that I can hold out until I can get something that shoots at 1080p, 60 FPS. Um, but if I can't, then uh, we'll figure out something else sooner. Um... Byron, when do you think PC games will start using Intel hyperthreading? Uh, they've been using hyperthreading for years. Hyperthreading is just leveraging virtual cores, and any game that takes advantage of multiple cores will take advantage of hyperthreading. <laughs> Scrappy wants to you know, on AMD making their Gigahertz Edition 7970s by only changing the BIOS and sensors and charging more for it. Who cares? Let people pay more if they want, because you could just buy a non-Gigahertz Edition, turn up the voltage, turn up the clock speed, and BAM! Gigahertz edition. So don't be lazy. Overclock your own GPU. Don't worry about it. Um, Justin, what do you think is better, Vertex 3 or Vertex 4? Really? Really, Justin? Why don't you ask me what's better, G4.6 or G4.5? Um, Vertex 4 is a little bit better. It's not as much better as we've seen in the past from Vertex 2 to Vertex 1 and 3 to 2, but um, it's a very reliable drive. I can say that based on the return data that NCIX sees. Outstanding, outstanding drives in terms of sheer reliability, and I think the performance speaks for itself on the Vertex 4. Can a 660 Ti hold up three 180 monitors? Um, physically, probably not. Um, in performance, depends what you're playing. If you're playing the latest games, no. Um, if you're playing the latest games on three 1080p monitors, get yourself dual 680s because that's what it's going to take, man. Um, Quinn, will you ever do a tech about the Korean panels? Uh, not unless NCIX starts selling them because there's no real benefit. I don't think there's... I think it's pretty self-explanatory. It's a cheap B-grade panel that's cheap and high res. What do you want me to say? Uh, there's lots of reviews on the various forums, so... Yeah. Uh, Riaz says, I have waited for you to reply to me. Could you answer one of them? I have posted a lot. shouldn't be hard to find. Here's my answer to the one that I did find. Um, I have answered one of them. Yes, I will answer it. Um, sorry, I'm answering the most interesting questions that I think will be valid to more users. So if yours didn't fall under that category, then I'm very sorry. Keenan says, I don't know how to use Twitter. Lol, did you get this? Yes, I did, Keenan. Thank you for using Twitter, apparently just for me. I actually do really appreciate that. Cameron says, I had need help with choosing a case. I have a hot room, small room, plenty of electronics. What case would you recommend? One with good ventilation, something like a Fractal Design Arc or a, um, a Corsair 300R would be a very good choice. Test Tester says, just received my Maximum PC Magazine. You know, the colon D thing. Um, good for you, I guess. Really, people read magazines still? Are you kidding? Kyle says, what do you think is the best case right now? Oh, P.S., we cannot hear you when you put your mic up. Sorry about that. Um, the best case right now is the best case that there's ever been, the Silverstone TJ07. And people might not agree with me, but I don't care because they don't have a YouTube channel. 
they can make a YouTube channel and they can make videos about how they don't like the TJ07, but no one will watch them because the TJ07 is the best case ever. TJ11 is just a little bit too big. Cosmos 2 is honestly not that well laid out. 800D is fairly low cost steel construction compared to the aluminum construction of the TJ07. You know, there's lots of cases that people are going to be like, whoa, keyboard warrior better than the TJ07. You know what? Once you spend the money on the TJ07, which I have to do things like powder coat it, you know, you cut a couple holes in it, um, it's untouchable because you can get a quad rad in the bottom, you can get um, a dual rad in the front, which is all the water cooling you really need, and it's just, oh, it's just beautiful absolutely beautiful. You know, the the unibody aluminum design that used to be better actually, the newer ones, use like a scoring process to make the, the curve um, for that single piece of aluminum that does the top, the front, and the bottom. Um, whereas the older ones were a straight bend, so it was more smooth, and I have one of the older ones, so uh, pretty much you can't buy what I think is the best case ever. Things like case labs and mountain mods are uh, too big for me. Um, let's see what else we got. Eric, you seem very busy. Do you have time to play games at all? Uh, hardly at all these days. Most of the gaming I get in is uh, when I'm benchmarking games for like video card reviews. <sighs> uh, Luke says, I'm about to spend $800 on it, Linus. What performance should I expect from a single GTX 684 gig over surround on ultra with no anti-aliasing? really depends on the game and you're spending way too much on that 680. Uh, for that kind of a price you can almost get a couple of 670 4 gigs which would give you way better performance, Luke. Hmm. <laughs> Mark Cho asks, what's faster, Usain Bolt or a 3770K? Um, probably Usain Bolt because I've never seen a 3770K do much of anything. I mean, a 3770K isn't much faster than this SD card. Look how fast it is. It's not even moving at all. Useless. Nomoculus says, could you briefly explain why I should switch from EVGA to your big three? Um, well, on the video card side, it makes less of a difference than motherboards because motherboards, it comes down to the BIOS implementation more than the hardware. So, you know, someone, actually EVG is a great example of fantastic hardware on the motherboards, and I've never been that impressed with the software side. Um, whereas the big three have been doing this a really long time, they're really experienced, their teams are outstanding, and that's why I stick with them for motherboards. Um, as for why I would explain why you should switch from EVGA to the big three, I would ask you to explain to me why you would go with an EVGA video card over the big three. There's nothing wrong with an EVGA video card. There's nothing wrong with an ASUS video card. Um, so I just, I, I don't know, it's up to you. Ultimately, EVGA is not manufacturing anything. I hope you guys know that. Um, the true manufacturers are the PC partners of the world. So that's your, uh, your Sapphire, your Zotac. Um, Pine, which is XFX, um, ASUS, which is ASUS, Gigabyte and MSI, these are true manufacturers. Um, Galaxy is a true manufacturer as well. And, uh, wait, PC Partner, yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that's Zotac. Um, wait, no, maybe not, maybe it is. I, I can't remember anymore, but, uh, yeah, EVGA doesn't manufacture anything, so um, it's just something to sort of think about. Um, as for why I would recommend a specific card, you know, for a 660 Ti, for example, I would go with the MSI one specifically because it has better overvolting options than any other 660 Ti, whether it's EVGA or ASUS or Gigabyte, who are members of the big three. So um, it really comes down to the individual product and what you're trying to get out of it. Um, how much does overclocking actually help, asks Brandon. Like for the 200 megahertz you said you could get from that card, how much does that help? Well, it's a pretty simple calculation. If you're GPU bound in the game and you go from 1 gigahertz to 1.2 gigahertz, you'll probably get anywhere from about a 12 to 20 percent performance improvement. You have to decide if it's worth it. It costs you nothing, so... Salim asks what time it is. It's almost midnight, so I think we really are done at midnight. I know I've said that a few times, but people keep like tuning in and they keep watching, so it's like, well, I don't want to go away if you guys are still watching. Uh, but at some point, I do have to do it. Show Rocket or Rumble. You know what? I don't know where they are. They're probably sleeping. I'm not going to bother them. It's pretty late. 
Uh, Mark, have you considered Hackintoshing your machine and using Final Cut for your editing tasks? Uh, yes, and at some point I will build a Hackintosh, and I will try out uh, I will try out Final Cut, but um, I just got to get around to it. What I really want to do is I want to do it in that Prodigy case, and uh, ASUS says they shipped me uh, the P8Z77i Deluxe, their ITX board, today, so I'm super excited about that. I can't wait to actually get that done. I know I promised that build a long time ago. Jack, are you excited for the Microsoft Surface? Absolutely. Um, I'm excited just because it's something truly new and innovative and different that Microsoft is doing. I mean, for so long, they've maintained the status quo, and I think they've been afraid to do something different, like truly different. I mean, the start menu was different back in, window, uh, back in, uh, back in 1995, and um, I think this will be the first time that they've done something actually that different again uh, with the Metro, the not Metro, but you know, not yet named interface. And I'm, uh, I'm very excited to use it. And I'm not going to form my opinion based on my first 10 minutes sitting down and using it. What I have to do is I have to get a proper device with a touchscreen, sit down and use it for a long time, and then decide. Because at first, I hated the updated start menu, for example, in Windows XP. Or was it Windows XP? Maybe it was Vista. I don't know. Whenever they updated the start menu to from the original design to the double width, and then once I just sort of forced myself to use it, I found out, oh, no, actually, they sort of probably did a lot of research on this because it's way better. Um, and I'm at the point now where I only use, um, I don't know, maybe maybe 20 applications on my computer. So, I mean, given I use Steam to launch every game, and, you know, I've got, like, Office and, like, my video editing software, there's not much beyond that, so do I actually need anything other than like sort of a tiled layout that I can sort of scroll between and click on something? Is that actually slower? I don't know. So I'll try it out. Devin wants to know what I think of the 1500 watt EVGA power supply. I think it's a 1500 watt power supply. Power supplies are power supplies. Um, I go with the one that has good efficiency and has like nice cables and uh, looks good, you know. Um, and Johnny Guru, of course, will do reviews that actually analyze the performance of it. So basically, it doesn't matter what I think. It matters what he thinks. Or Oklahoma Wolf is the one doing the reviews there now. But uh... All right, there's enough people asking for Rocket or Rumble. I'll go look for the cat, okay? Because we're going to tune out pretty quick, and I'll, uh, I don't want to just ignore you guys. Hold on. Poor guy was sleeping and I bothered him. So you can see he's uh he's pretty agitated and he wants to go back to bed. But here's Rocket and uh he's pretty cute. I'm gonna get him to say hi. I hope you guys can hear me. Say hi. Yeah, you can see he's really uh wanting to go somewhere else. So here, I'll see if he'll sit with me for a little bit. Rumble, get down. Hey. He's not allowed on the counter. He was going up on the counter. So uh, let's see if we can get a few more questions going here. Here, I'll tilt it down because I know you guys want to see the cat more than you want to see me anyway at this point. All right, scrolling back up to the top. Let's see if we've got a few more questions to answer. You guys freaking serious? <laughs> there's no way I can. Uh, there's no way I can keep up with you. No way I can keep up with you. Oh, man. Linus, posting it again. Um, IX slash Bulldozer versus Xeon Opteron and Quadro Fire Pro versus GeForce Radeon. Which one in which, um, which circumstances? Well, for consumer use, you want to use consumer products. And for workstation use, you want to use workstation products. So it's not really rocket science. Um, Byron asks, what kind of car do you have? I drive a Honda Civic 2003. Manual, of course. 
Um, Kevin, <laughs> Mr. Sebastian, pancakes or waffles? And I would refer you to my favorite song, which goes, do you like pancakes? Yeah, we like pancakes. Do you like French toast? Yeah, we like... No, is it waffles? Do you like... I don't know. Whatever. It's on Newgrounds. Anyway, Rocket wants to go now. So, uh, sorry for subjecting you guys to that. Uh, so we'll go back to me since he's gone back to his nap. Rumble's still hanging around here. Hey, there he is. Hey, Rumble. Hi, sweetheart. Say hi, everyone. Hold on, I'll see if I can get him to meow. Meow. Hey. Meow. Meow. Hey. Meow. Oh, he's not in the mood. Sorry, guys, he's not in the mood. Usually he'll talk to me if I talk to him. And I'm sorry for being such a cat lady here, but uh, you know, I, I am what I am. Okay, moving down. Hmm, does the size of the motherboard make a difference in performance? The answer is no. Especially these days with so many high-performance ITX boards that can you know, overclock to the moon and back. Um, Joseph wants to know, how do you tell what version of PCIe your motherboard is if it has no indication? Uh, usually you can tell by the platform. So if you have a P55 motherboard, for example, your PCIe is 2.0. That simple. Uh, Plush Giant wants to know, what are the big three that you mentioned when talking about EVGA? ASUS, Gigabyte, MSI, those are the big three. Those are the tier ones. Um, Tor Mundy says, you mentioned about the double size bar on Windows 7, you can make it regular old school size and properties. And I did that for a long time um, until I realized that, you know, maybe I'll just try it. Maybe I'll just give it a shot. And then I found out I liked the double width one better, so I no longer care. Um, Mikhail, do you ever think about having JJ on an episode? Sure, he's, uh, he's more than welcome to come join us on an episode. I think part of the reason that he does so many episodes on Newegg TV is that his, he works down the street. So it's a lot more convenient for him, whereas he would actually have to fly up here in order to, uh, in order to hang out with me. And I'm not that fun to hang out with, although 2,100 people would say otherwise, apparently. Yeah. Which is cool. Thank you guys for all uh, for all checking out the stream. So you know what? It's midnight. So um, I think we're going to call it quits at this point in time. And uh, so I'll answer one last question, Bobby Pope. You can be the last question of the night. Uh, do you have a home theater PC? And if not, what's keeping you from building one? I do have a home theater PC. I have uh, an awesome, silent ITX home theater PC and a PCQ. 07 from Lee and Lee. It's using a Zotac uh, LG1156 mini ITX P55 board and uh, a core i5 dual core with the onboard video and then I have like a TV tuner in there uh, that I don't really use anymore because the analog TV is totally irrelevant now. Um, and I use it to play like emulated ZSNES games on my TV and uh, to stream media from my home server. So, good night everyone, and thank you for watching, and Minecraft Freak X is, is like spamming me. What's a good gaming laptop? The one with the good spec and the low price. Come on, man. Um, what do you want me to say? There's only a few brands out there that make gaming laptops at all. Asus, MSI, Lenovo, they're all good. What do you want? Like, I don't know. Find the one that you like, that looks good to you, and, and then buy it. Um, <laughs> bye, everybody. <laughs>